Hi and welcome to my guide of the quest Dream Mentor. The quest requirements are Lunar Diplomacy and Edgar's Ruse. And the stats requirements is that you have a minimum of combat 85. For the items needed is a Seal of Passage, one Astral Rune, one Tinderbox, Hammer and a Pestle and Mortar. So you will also need to have three different kinds of food and you will need to have seven pieces of each three. Now don't take two expensive items because we will lose all of them. To save up some inventory space, I just bought a sack of potatoes, which holds 10, two baskets of oranges and two of tomatoes. It doesn't matter at all what kind of food, as long as you have three pieces of each and that there are three varieties. One extra thing that I must mention about the food is that you will need to give the NPC food, which will have a eat option. Cooking apples do not have a eat option, so they are actually not considered edible. Be sure to keep that in mind. The next item that we will need is a goutweed herb, which I will be getting during the quest. You can easily get this herb before you're going to start the quest, but since getting it before the quest start or during takes pretty much the same amount of time, I'm just going to do it during the quest. And therefore, since I am currently on the Lunar Spellbook, I'm going to bring along a Trollheim teleport tablet as well as the runes to get back to Lunar Isle. Now the next segment of my items that are needed and suggested is about the boss fight. I underestimated the boss fight so I didn't prepare all the way and this voiceover will help you prepare better. First part is about damage taking. This quest has pretty much one boss and the other three creatures mean absolutely nothing in comparison. The boss has an accurate melee and ranged attack, with the max hit of ranged being 20 and 18 for melee. Don't think about activating prayers in the dream world because the gods don't reach you there. If you would stand from a melee distance, he will mostly use his melee attack, but not all the time. Since the max hit of the melee attack is too less than range it, I would say to stand next to the boss and tank his melee hits instead of range it. After killing the boss, you don't even need to take any more damage since you can easily save spot the three other creatures that are spawned. Also, they are a lot weaker. Next segment is about damage giving and what kind of gear. Now, the first thing that I want to say is pretty much the most important one. The boss fight is in an instant, meaning that if you were to die, you are not able to get your lost items back. So do not bring items that you are not prepared to lose, because a disconnection can always happen. Now for the boss itself, his magic level is 1, meaning that you can deal magic damage more easily. The best method, in my opinion, would be wearing melee ranged defensive gear, like melee barrows, with a trident of the seas or swamp. Now it is immune to poison and venom though. With this setup, you can tank the attacks with your melee gear, while you're still able to hit quite a bit with your trident's attack. If you're unable to equip or get a trident, you could either wear a full split bark, since it has some uh, defensive stats, or I would actually suggest you to wear rune or other defensive melee gear, and then use Iban Blast. This is pretty much the same as a trident, where the amount of damage that you deal does not depend on your uh, magical bonuses, but on your magic level itself. So a quick summarize is just wear some really good defensive gear with Ivan Blast or either a Trident of the Seas. Now you can bring a Dragon Dagger as a special attack. I also brought my Dragon Boots and Natus Not Helm for strength bonuses, but I didn't wear them at all after I've used my special attacks. I also brought my Whip along with me, and I didn't even use it once. Uh, Iban Blast was way more effective, uh, comparing it to my whip with my current stats of 70 attack and strength. Next segment is food and potions. Just take the best food that you can get your hands on. 16 hit points healing monkfish should be a bare minimum. Uh, sharks or dark wraps should be the best option. As for potions, you can bring one magic potion if you want to. There is no need to bring prayer potions since you can't activate any of them anyway. Now next for the teleports, I would suggest you to actually have your Lunar Spellbook on. 
and then you will need to have the runes for one or two NPC contacts, which is one astral, one cosmic, and two airs. Then also three extra teleportation methods to Moon Clan, which is two astrals, two earth, and one law rune each. Now, if you don't have the magic level, just like me, you can easily just buy some magic potions. That is how I am going to get around it. Next, to end it, I'm just going to wear some weight reducing armor at the start of the quest, as well as one stamina potion. First, at the start of the quest, let's use the bank and deposit our weapons and armor because we will not need it at the start of the quest, as well as our food. You might as well just take like two pieces of food because we will need to pass a couple of sequas, which can use ice barrage. Then I'm also going to unnote my magic potions. And then I will end up with eight inventory spaces, which should be more than enough to uh, remove from the baskets. And let's start a quest by exiting Moon Clan uh, town and let's go north. We will now need to go to the dungeon sign on the northeastern part of the island. This is where we have mined the Lunar Ore during the uh, Lunar Diplomacy quest. Just go back to that dungeon and climb down the uh, ladder. Next, go south and you find a quest sign. Go towards it and you should find a cave entrance north. Crawl through it and in here we should find a fallen man. First we will get a warning option because this is in an instant and any items dropped in this cave will be lost upon uh, leaving. Here, right click on the fallen man and inspect him. Do you want to help the man? Uh, sure. To start a quest. I will now get this status interface. Everything is currently uh, 0%. But he is critically wounded. We can't do anything. Let's first try to heal him by giving him one piece of food. This should increase his health. Next, because he is a little bit picky, we will need to uh, give him a variety of food. Next, I will give him an apple. Really? What is wrong with apples? Okay, since apparently cooking apples are not edible, let's try oranges. These have a eat option. Give him a tomato. If you would now right click and inspect the fallen man, he will now have 15%. We will need to keep doing this until he has 40%. Now, once you've done the loop once, you can simply start back with the first food you've started with. Oh, once he has reached 20%, he will start leaning on his arm. And he's now able to talk. Just keep feeding him some food until he has 40%. Okay, once he has reached 40%, let's start talking to him. And now we just need to give him some encouraging words, like, just don't worry. Of course, just keep selecting the options which are most encouraging or uh, the nicest.
Okay, apparently I did this part a little bit too long. He's already above 40%. Uh, let's just keep talking to him until he has reached 70% spirit. Okay, once he has reached 70% spirit, let's uh, start feeding him again. Five percent each. This should be very fine. This will be very quick and. The next cutscene, he will now be standing up. Just continue through this conversation until he will ask you to get his stuff from him from the bank. So you could either run all the way back to the Moon Clan bank, or what I suggest you to do is just teleport with the Moon Clan, teleport and just go to the bank that way, it is a lot quicker. Now here in the bank there will be now a third banker called Bird's Eye Jack, the most eastern one. Talk to him, select the second option about Sirius in the mine. Just skip through the conversation until he will give you a chest of his bank. until you have actually this interface. Now the gear that he wants to wear is usually the Dragon Mat Helm with the Aram's top, bottom, Ranger Boots and the Abyssal Whip. But there might be a slight chance that he wants to wear something else. So close the interface after choosing those items, then cast NPC Contact and call him. Good choice. Now just keep checking uh, your chat box, what he actually wants, if he agrees with every single thing. Then you don't need to change anything anymore. And you can now uh, give Sirius's chest to him. Okay, back in the cave, let's uh, give him his chest. Yes, I know it's an instant. He is currently standing up. Let's talk to him, talk about the ornament. And he will now try it on. Okay, let's right click and inspect him. And now we will need to get his health and spirit to 100%. Let's start with the easy one, which is feeding him.
Alright, when the armament, his health bar and as well as his spirit bar are all three 100%, another cutscene will start, just keep pressing the spacebar. He's still kind of scared on going alone to the Arteon Mancer, because that is where we'll need to go next. So now we will need to go to the Arteon Mancer, I suggest just to teleport to Moon Clan and run south. And we will need to go to her because he wants to meet her and he doesn't really want to go alone. So let's go talk to her near the astral uh, altar. And after talking to her, we will now need to make our uh, shared dream potion. And this will require the gout wheat. Let's select the second option about citizens. Okay, he will be teleported, skip through the dialogue, give me the vial. And he will see you at the brazier. Next we will need to get some gout wheat. To do this we will need to go to Trollheim. Be sure that you have at least one teleportation method back to Moon Clan, else it will be a very long walk back. If you already have your gout wheat, you can skip this part. I will put a timer on the screen when I have gotten my gout wheat back. For those who don't, just go to the troll stronghold. Just like Edgar's Roost Quest, we're just going to steal it from the chest, which is located uh, near the kitchen. Good thing I've brought one stamina potion. Enter the troll stronghold and go south. Just keep going south until we see a staircase. This will lead to the kitchen. And we pretty much already made it to the storeroom. In the kitchen, let's go northeast. You will find another staircase. Climb down. Follow this path. And now we will need to go to now we'll need to go to the southern part of this storeroom. But just like in the Edgar's Roost quest. We must not be seen by any of these walking trolls. I'll put an image on screen which should be the most efficient way to get to the southern side of this storeroom. First I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can easily see where the trolls are walking. Let's run south. I will be seen. If you get seen, no repercussions, You're, you just need to start over and try to look for the trolls. Okay. No, 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 no. Go, 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 go. This is just a trial and error, I think, or you just need to be very patient to when you have the perfect sequence of walking trolls. Okay, this is, oh my God, dude. Good, one down. Okay, now when you are here at the second save spot, do not directly click on the search option on the crate. First, we will need to stand uh, next to the crates. Be sure not to click on the crates and click next to them. Quickly click next to them and then search the crate. This way you will get your cow tweet. Click to continue and you will get knocked out again. Okay, when you have your cow tweet, let's return to Moon Clan Island. And now we actually need to prepare our potion so we are able to do the boss fights and complete this quest. As for the remainder of your food that you currently have in your inventory, you can drop everything or bank everything, you don't need any more food. First, back into town, let's fill up our dream vial with water on one of the three resources of water, then add the gout wheat, and then we will need to use a hammer on a astral rune 
to smash it into shards and then crush the shards with our pestle and mortar to dust and use this dust on the dream vial with goutweed to make a dream potion. And now it is time to prepare for our boss fight. So we don't need our pestle and mortar or hammer anymore. We will still need our seal of passage and our tinder box. We don't need our stamina potions anymore. I don't know how, but apparently I have one too many uh, moon clan teleports in my inventory. Also not needed anymore. Deposit. Don't need my weak monkfish. I'm going to take my potion, one magic potion. And let's prepare for the boss fight. I'm just going to take out my mystics with Ivan staff, which I currently have equipped. I will also need my barrows gloves. Okay, this is done. Okay, once again, do not take anything that you are not prepared to lose on death. Because the bus fight will also be in an instant and you will not be able to get it back if you die. So keep that in mind. Deposit my graceful. Ivan Blast uh, requires fire and death runes. Okay, what the fuck? I apparently can't use Ivan Staff while I am on Lunars. So first I will need to get uh, my spellbook swapped. Stamina potion and that is it. Let's get to that altar and change it back into regulars. I am going to show you the original clip of me fighting the Comet 343 boss in my mystical outfit with uh, 70 defense and 65 magic. It is possible to kill it that way, but you will take a lot of damage since Mystic has absolutely no melee or range at defensive bonuses. Hey, here is my Iban Blast. Okay, so besides my magical gear, Iban Blast, Iban Staff, I'm going to use my Dragon Dagger special attacks on the first monster. The first monster is the most difficult one. Prayer boosting armor is completely useless since we can't activate any prayers in a dream. And I think besides from this, deposit my stamina potion, grab a full inventory of food. And I should be able to kill all four of those uh, bosses. Okay, uh, when you think you are ready, let's go west to the western building. Turn off your altar retaliate because the first monster will uh, spawn a couple of level 78 minions. Inside, let's light the brazier with our tinderbox. Let's talk to citizens to enter the dream world. Now you just need to say yes and you are in the dream world. Now if you would want to leave, there is a book on a lectern somewhere uh, north of this uh, plane. When you right click on it and leave, you will automatically get teleported out of this area. But if you would leave this area by either dying or leaving via the book, you will have to restart all of the battles. First it is the most difficult monster, which is the Comet 343. Let's stand close to it so it can use his uh, melee attack and it will stop using his ranged attack. It is quite a huge one. It uses um, ranged and melee. Since I'm currently wearing mystics, uh, ranged attacks are not really my best thing. So I'm quickly going to run next to it. Okay, this is actually the second time I am doing this cutscene. Do not click anywhere, only press your spacebar. Do not click anything besides click to continue. Also, do not click anywhere near the monster, so you're able to stand in melee distance because this will end the uh, cutscene. Then you just need to talk to uh, Sirius again, and so you can easily start the cutscene again. Okay. Are you good to fight? Uh, sure. Okay, cutscene is over. Let's attack the monster here. Let's stand in melee distance. 
ranged attacks is not really my strong suit. Now, if you would end up with just like eight pieces of sharks left, this is no problem. This is the most difficult boss. Oh, I completely forgot about my special attacks. Quickly, do not forget to heal. Kill this guy. Unleash your special attacks on this guy. This is the most difficult boss of this quest. I'm about to die. Ah. Auto cost item lost. And do the remainder. Ah, come on. Stop hitting me so hard. Oh my god. I'm just going to uh, run around. Stupid creatures. Is the melee attack stronger than the range yet? That would suck. No, it hits 18. Come on, die. Okay, the strongest one is dead. I have no more food. I'm quickly running north to the lectern. And I'm going to hide from the next creature. Hopefully I will be able to uh, defeat the next three bosses. I should be able to. The second battle. Just use the safe spot and use magic to kill it from a distance. You will take no damage. Okay, second battle is done. Third battle, the untouchable, come at 274. Let's attack him, stand behind the lectern, hide like a little pussy. And he only has 90 hit points. Dude, you can easily 5 hit him. The max hit of Ivan Bloss is 25. Now with the fourth battle, this is against a Comet 108, Elusive, that is his name, Elusive, but he rarely fights, he's uh, mostly underground, hiding and running. So let's attack him, maybe run away from him because I have low hit points. Usually he's the one running away, so just try to find the Comet 108 and fight it from a distance maybe. I have no food. Yeah, after one hit he already uh, dives under the ground. Let's wait for it to pop up again. Over there. Attack it. Thank you. 
Okay, when the elusive monster has been defeated, you will see another cutscene. Uh, Cyrusus will step on it, because he finally has the courage to do so. Now we just need to return to the Orionomancer to complete our quest. Okay, let's open the door. Let's return to the Orionomancer. Let's maybe first grab a teleportation method out of the island, or away from the island, if you do not wish to stay here. And let's go to the Orionomancer. After completing this quest, you now have unlocked seven new spells on the Lunar Spellbook, which are uh, Monster Examine, Humidify, Hunter Kit, Stat Spy, Plank Make, Dream, and Spellbook Swap. So let's talk to Orion Master about Sirenesis. To complete our quest, we should also get two quest points. 15,000 hit points experience, 10,000 magic experience, as well as a dreamy lamp. Congratulations, you've completed the Dream Mentor quest. This dreamy lamp, if you would rub it, this will award you 15,000 experience in any combat skill, except for prayer and attack. Since I still need magic for Swan Song, I'm going to take this one. As an indirect reward of this quest, you now also have a third banker in the Lunar Bank, which is the most eastern one. I can now easily use this bank. And if you would deposit your Seal of Passage, you can still use the bank stall owned by or controlled by Bird's Eye Jack. If you would talk to Citadel Banker, you will get teleported out. So you're still unable to speak nor trade any NPCs on the island without having your Seal of Passage with you. But if you would have your Seal of Passage in your bank, you can now grab it on Lunar Isle by using the Bird's Eye Jack Banker. Okay, this was my guide how to complete Dream Mender Quest. Hopefully it helped a little bit. Hopefully you didn't die in the dream. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.